Lamar. I'm so sorry if I butchered that. I love your hoodie. Um, Layla does social activism work and is a member of the Guelph Black Students Association and has published many articles about Canada's modernist and historical relationship with blackness in Chatelaine McLean's in Ontario. I'll pass the mic over to Layla. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, that's a hard act to follow, uh, but my name is Layla. I'm going to try and share my screen with you right now. Okay. Are we seeing the presentation in its fullest, most beautiful form? Fantastic. So uh, my name is Layla. I'm really excited to be here at Golden Greats. Uh, a bit about me. I am a a CHCA, CHCI alumna. I graduated in 2017. I'm an honors BA in English from the University of Guelph. Uh, so like Eddie, I'm a Guelph grad and I will be beginning my master's of library and information science in uh, the fall of 2021. And I'm a researcher and a journalist. So when I was at Cameron, I led the Cameron Heights GSA for four years. Uh, when we started, it was the Gay Straight Alliance. By the time we left, it was the Gender Sexuality Awareness Club uh, under Miss Main's guidance. It taught me a lot about organizing human rights, equity, and justice, which are still really central to my work today. I was also on the Cameron Heights dance team or D crew. I will not show you pictures from that era, but <laughs> it existed. And uh, Miss Knowlton taught me a lot about the importance of teamwork and practice and being really passionate about what you do. Uh, Miss Ledlow's grade nine English class and grade 11 genocide class really ignited a fire in me for talking about civil rights and social movements. And because I am an English major and I am an English BA, um, I, my English teachers made a really big impact on me as well. Uh, Miss Ledlow, for sure. Miss Curavilla and Miss Matani really taught me how to hone my writing skills. I was also really lucky to have Mr. Dietrich for writer's craft. Uh, you have an absolute jewel at Cameron Heights, and that is Miss Davis in the library. I would not have gotten anywhere if Miss Davis had not taught me how to do research and find sources and separate opinion from fact. And I always enjoyed writing, uh, but so many people taught me how to write well and how to write responsibly. So like Axel said, y'all have the best teachers ever. Like you really lucked out. Uh, Mr. Grandsma's Challenge and Change class also really helped. And Ms. Carson's Family Studies course uh, taught me how to communicate my ideas persuasively. And they also exposed me to a wide variety of worldviews. Like I... I had no idea how people on the other side of the world were living or really even people, how people in my own community were living um, until I saw some of the material in these courses and it was really, really helpful to me. So if I forgot to shout you out, I'm sorry, uh, but yeah, you made an impact on me too. So when I graduated, I went to the University of Guelph on scholarship. I picked Guelph because they gave me the most money, <laughs> if I'm being honest, and also because uh, there are some uh, giants in the world of Black Canadian writing at the University of Guelph in the faculty, like Lawrence Hill and uh, Dion Brand. So I really, really wanted to take a course with them, and I was able to do that, which was very exciting. Uh, but when I looked around campus, I was like, not a lot of people around here look like me. And sometimes I would go into class and I'd be like, huh, did that person really just say that? Are these people really just grabbing me and touching my hair when they've never even spoken to me before? So I'm not a journalism major. My path to journalism was really unconventional. And it started because I published a piece called Keep the Volume Low, Being Black on Campus in Canada on medium.com where you can write and publish uh, your own work. And eventually, uh, my friends told me this is really good. You should pitch it. So I pitched it to Denise Balkasoon, who is the executive editor at Chatelaine, and to this day is my editor. And she was like, oh, "Yeah, great. We'll run it tomorrow. I'll give you, you know, this amount of money." And I was like, "Paid for my writing? This is possible?" I was like, I wanted to call my parents and be like, "I told you. I told you I wouldn't starve." I certainly wasn't rolling in dough at that. First, uh, first instance, but I was very excited. 
Um, so I've been writing professionally for Shadow Lane ever since. I've written for a couple of different companies, but mostly I write for St. Joseph's Communications, which is the company that owns Shadow Lane and McLean's. And I just kept writing and pitching about the things that were passionate to me, passionate um, sources of passion for me. And I wrote about libraries. I wrote about education. I wrote about art, things that were really meaningful to me. Um, and I wrote about history as well. Some of my favorite experiences to date have been the Walls to Bridges program, uh, where I took a third year creative nonfiction course at the Grand Valley Institute for Women, which is uh, the federal women's prison in Kitchener. So there were 10 students from the prison and 10 students from U of G, and we met at the prison and read and gave feedback on each other's work. Uh, and I lectured at a conference at the University of Toronto Scarborough in 2019. Um, I also got a research assistantship, and I'll talk more about that later, uh, that took me to Halifax to study Black culture, identity, and politics. And this research actually forms the basis for a lot of the writing I do today still. Um, and I was featured as an artist in an exhibit in Guelph when I got back, actually for my photography on Black life in Canada. And you can see that on the screen here. And uh, some of my favorite experiences to date are that I pre-screened for the National Film Board of Canada, and I was a book consultant for Lawrence Hill, which meant a lot for me. Legally, I can't say much about that, uh, but you'll find, you'll uh, if you pick up a book that comes out in January of 2022 and you look to the acknowledgements, you might see my name. And uh, that meant a lot to me because I grew up reading his books. And, um, I got to see my work end up on the curriculum at Western University, uh, which meant a lot because it wasn't only my, my Chatelaine pieces, it was my actual academic work and my research. And uh, one piece, uh, so this is the good side, you know, I got to do CBC The Current with Matt Galloway, and there's also the bad side of things. Because so much of my work is political, I get death threats and I have to have safety plans and harassment on social media, people trying to dox me. This is part of my life. It happens fairly regularly. Uh, not so much anymore. I think people uh, are kinder. Maybe I just have better security. But one day I came home absolutely devastated from a piece. And then I found out the Canadian Minister of Heritage had read it and loved it. And that meant a lot to me. Uh, so here is, oh, and I got to learn Anishinaabe, which was a lot of fun. Don't ask me to say anything. Bojo Gakina, Leila Ndijinikaz, Waterloo Ndonji, Guelph Ndijida. Anything else? Uh, I'll need my dictionary. Thank you. Um, so some advice if you want to get into journalism. Um, you can write and publish your own articles and personal essays on Medium. That's how I began. If you're looking for something you can do now in the academic stream, I'd recommend taking grade 12 writer's craft as an elective. If you're in IB, go in all in on your EE. And if you've already submitted your EE, really listen to the feedback that they give you. Um, you're going to have to take English all four years of high school anyways. So really listen to the feedback your teachers are giving you. And I say that it's easier said than done. Learning how to accept criticism on your work is hard. I remember getting work back at high school and I couldn't look at it directly because like the sight of it head on was too painful. Uh, but no matter how good your work is, and I'm sure everyone else can attest to this, improvements are going to have to be made. Uh, I still get some brutal editing cuts and changes sometimes. It's okay to make mistakes. And I know Everyone has said this today, but it's really okay. And it's also inevitable because no one's perfect. Try to learn from your mistakes, but also please don't be afraid to ask for help or clarification. One of the best ways to do, to do this if you go to university is to go to office hours, uh, which is when your professor will have you know, a designated time where you can go and see them in their office and ask them questions. And that's also how you get to know your professors and find out about opportunities in your field. Uh, different things that are going on. That's how I got my research assistantship. Um, I would also say be prepared for some backlash. And the difference between backlash and feedback is backlash doesn't come with any real advice attached to it. And it's usually um, directed at you and not your work. Uh, if your work makes everybody happy, everyone agrees with it, no one has any opinions, chances are you're not writing honestly. Uh, some people go through lots of different emotions when their worldview is challenged, and that's fundamentally about them and not about you. 
all you can do is provide the facts and then they can make their own journey along. Right often when I was in grade nine and forced to go to IB, like, uh, <laughs> like uh, Axel mentioned, I thought I was gonna be an engineer because my parents told me I was gonna be an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. Uh, but good writing skills are going to be useful no matter what you do, uh, whether you like journaling, writing short stories, reading often also helps improve your writing. And if you don't like, if you're not a big reader, podcasts, articles, different things, it doesn't have to be books. Graphic novels, manga, all awesome things to read. Uh, networking. Connect with people who have the same goals as you and find mentors in your field. A good way to do this is through volunteering, uh, kind of pay your dues, make your bones, um, you know, stick your nose in the dirt, really get in there and it'll pay off. Uh, scholarship money. Now I fell flat on my face a couple of weeks ago when I interviewed for the McCall McBain scholarship and did not get it. It was a grueling interview process. But I wouldn't be where I am today without the Royal Land Farm Scholarship, the Board of Governors Scholarship, and the Kaya Firth Scholarship, which out of the many scholarships I apply to, those are the ones I've actually gotten. Uh, please apply to as many scholarships as you can, even if you don't think you've got a shot at it. One of the scholarships I got, I got because no one else applied. It was for people who live on farms. I do not live on a farm. <laughs> but I got it because I was the only person who applied and also maybe because I didn't read the, the scholarship summary as closely as I would have liked, but I made it clear I didn't live on a farm and I still got it. All in all, uh, try and surround yourself with passionate people, not to say you should abandon your friends if they're struggling, but I was really fortunate to know Hussein and was really excited when I found out he was coming here today. And honestly, I, been so fortunate to forge such great friendships at Cameron. I have how many? Oh, sorry. I got engaged recently. Another thing going on in my life and all of my bridesmaids are friends from Cameron. So it, it happens. It's possible. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much.